my name is Maria Juliana Asauf and I was born in Colombia and then I moved to Canada when I was 18 and then I moved back to Colombia when I was 24 and then I moved to England when I was 25 and I'm in Oxford now studying a master's and I've been here since September so like eight months yeah and I'm studying development so my aunt in Colombia bought them in the local market they were really cheap they were just like uh, like 50 pence or something but I really like them because they really remind me of my city and I bought them because I, I think I needed sandals because it was really hot there <laughs> uh, let's say to in like my small town in Colombia called Florida Blanca I've gone through the whole town probably in these sandals but it's a pretty small town so from my house to the end of the town is maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Very much smaller than Oxford. It's, yeah, it's maybe like city center of Oxford, basically. Actually, I've taken them to the beach, like, every time, and to pools and stuff. So every time I go to, like, water places or places in nature, I took them to Turkey. I was in Turkey. In an Airbnb, so I was wearing them when I was showering, and that was, it was really special. Then I, I went to the beach, like to the coast in Turkey, with these sandals for the first time in Turkey. So, really good memories from Turkey, really good experience out uh, there recently. In the morning, I'm excited about work, about my dissertation, about what I want to do in life um, about friends, loved ones about trying to make each day better than yesterday so I don't know, the mornings are a pretty big thing for me and I guess these shoes are associated with the mornings I, I think it's basic things that every human being goes through I mean, difficulties like maybe differences with people that you have to work through during a day and um, discipline to try to get all the things that I have to get done in that day sometimes it's difficult uh, but other than that I don't have any major difficulties this town is, is really special like out of all the towns that I've ever been to, or all the cities that I've ever been to, I think there's a special vibe in this city. I don't know, it's a combination of things. It's really beautiful. I think the buildings are really beautiful. The landscapes are really beautiful. The parks, the green. Oh, I love the green, the trees. Just walking around is pleasurable, which I never lived in somewhere like this pretty, <laughs> to be honest. It's the nicest place I've ever lived in. I, I like that it's it's small, but it's not too small, but it's not too big either. There's history, and the people are all pretty like young in general, and dreamy, and they have ideals and stuff, which it's really rare to find a combination of people like that in another city. A lot in my job, because I'm in journalism, so you're always trying to write about people and you're always trying so hard to see how it would be to live in people's shoes but it's impossible because unless you've gone through the exact same thing that somebody else has, has gone through you can't really know so you can read so much and you can try to know so much but you can't really know I've tried but when I met I mean or when I've done stories like I was writing for multicultural newspapers in Toronto so I was writing about the Caribbean community and there were some problems in the neighborhood there was a lot of racism because there were shootings that summer and the community was really pissed off and I was trying to understand but it's so impossible because I was not from the community from that specific group of people who got discriminated that summer so yeah I can to report on their voices but and and you get to understand them when you hear the stories which is good and you can write about it but I think you'll never know but I've try, I try every day I try, even in my dissertation I'm trying so hard 
because I'm doing my dissertation on Syrian journalists and I'm trying really hard to be in their shoes but how can I be in their shoes like I'm not from Syria and I'm not going through all the things that they are going through like the war and everything and being threatened for reporting I've never had that experience but I I can try to talk to them and to really listen to them and maybe through that I can portray the stories properly. I don't know, I try. Well, shelter for sure, everybody needs a place to sleep and a place to sleep properly because <laughs> even I, when I was sleeping in hostels in Turkey I had some horrible ones and I couldn't do my job properly because I couldn't sleep and that's one thing that I made me realize how such things that I take for granted, if they're not there, I couldn't do the same, I wouldn't have the same ability to do my job. And it's not depending on people's capacities, it's literally, if you don't have a place to sleep, you can't really work properly. Food, water, like, really basic things, clothes, because the clothes that you wear also determines how people treat you. Like, it's what it is, right? If you can't uh, like wash your hair for 10 months and, and then you try to go to a job interview, you're probably not gonna get it. Like it's, life is harsh. So if you can't afford all the things that you need to make it through life, then you can't. And that's really unfortunate. Also I think family, people need family. Like friends, if you're really isolated, you, you can't really have a happy life, I don't think. I think you have to have people that you can communicate and express yourself with and your problems. Because without it, you can probably, you, you're just gonna be so sad. <laughs> uh, I think that's one of my favorite topics in the world. <laughs> because I, I completely experienced the difference from not being able to do that to completely having the whole world open to me when I became citizen in Canada. Because before I was just a Colombian citizen and I had a Colombian passport and you growing up you already know that you're not gonna get visas for anywhere. Especially I was growing up in the 90s before they signed the peace process that they just signed and things were not as easy like uh, now apparently Colombians don't need visa for Europe because I don't know why for some reason. But growing up it was completely impossible, like, you can't even apply for a visa unless you have so much money in the bank to show the visa officers, so you, you're, lim you're limited completely to a country, to a space, to a culture, so I was really lucky that I could get out of Colombia, like it was just a lot of situations in my life gathered so that I could go to Canada. And then I got a citizenship there, like it was also really lucky and... But then I was a Canadian citizen and my whole life changed. My whole, everything changed. I mean, now I could study anywhere in the world, now I could get um, loans from the Canadian government to study in places which in Colombia it's really hard to get. It's really hard, it's really competitive and it's really hard. Whereas. In Canada, everybody seems to be able to go to university. It's a good country and yeah, you can travel. That's, that's why I came to the UK. Probably I couldn't come to the UK if I wasn't a Canadian citizen coming from Colombia. It would be only a few people in Colombia can afford to do that. The least privileged people in the world, they cannot travel. And they are the ones who should be able to travel the most because they are the ones who need more opportunities, I think. I think it's terrible that because of your passport that just determines what your life is going to be just because of your passport. Or sometimes it's because of the, the place, the city you were born. And it's worse even when people are coming from countries that are in war because if people are coming from war countries they are completely denied it's almost impossible for people to get refugee status in a developing world, a developed country out of how many 60 million displaced people in the world how many are they taking to to give them a new home in a new country even to just let them inside a country not many i think it, it would have to be a combination of work and 
the image that you leave in people, like a good memory that people have, that people learn something from you or from your life and from the way you lived your life that people can look back at that and think, oh, that's, uh, there's some good lessons there. That could be, maybe that's even more important than the job that I would do or whatever writing I do, if anyone even reads it. <laughs> Although that would be nice to leave just a book or something that people would read. That would be really cool. It's obviously the dream of any writer or people who want to be writers. So that's my dream too. I think it would be something around the lines of not judging people before you know people because you never know what people's stories are like. Yeah, you just have no idea, and any assumptions we can make about humanity, like we never know. And I guess that's what life has taught me in a way, from being in different countries and meeting different people from different countries. That's kind of the passion of my life, is meeting people from different countries and different backgrounds and different life experiences. So if people can take anything, it's just to open their minds and, and meet everybody that they can and have no stereotypes. Obviously it's just super hard. I can't even do it. And we're all human, we all make so many mistakes, so there's no point in judging even people who are committed, who have committed crimes or anything like that. Like I've met all, all sorts of people like that. And, and you can't really judge because you never know what led them to do that. Oh, I want to visit more countries. I want to keep traveling and I have a list of places with my boyfriend. I want to go to Barcelona. I've never been. No, I would like to have a fulfilling career, personal life and yeah, maybe leave some kind of a legacy in some way through my personal life combined with my work, but they are pretty similar, but at the moment, my goal in life is that my personal life and my job become one and that everything becomes connected so that I can really follow my true passion and find out what's the reason I'm in this world. Yeah, I think it's writing, journalism and using those skills and using those skills in, in an international setting I don't know if it's going to be to connect people or to inform people about other people. Um, maybe to create empathy. Yeah, that would be great.